Good morning. It's Saturday, March 27, 2021. Just got done with workout and shopping and now for some endurance news and random musings. A week ago, my uh, YouTube channel went viral, for me at least, with my reporting on the Barkley Marathon. So thank you all for watching and thank you for the comments and thank you for the subscriptions. I plan on covering lots more races. I've been doing covering races since I started coaching way back in 2006. I remember getting this little camera uh, and it was because, uh, you know, the cell phones weren't ta really taking pictures back then. I got a camera that used floppy disk, you know, the little square things. You kids probably have no idea what a floppy disk is. And I remember it only take like 20 photos. And then, of course, I got a Canon Rebel, took lots of pictures across country and track and field, which have always been two of my favorite sports. And I started covering road races and then ultras and hikes. So all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, last weekend, Barking Marathons was going on. And it was amazing how much people were really, really interested in that. And uh, it was really fun to follow. And I hope to do it in the future along with lots of other races. When they happen, of course, like nothing really on the landscape uh, that I can think of big races. But there'll be more, you know, just kind of waiting out and seeing what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. Like Western States was interesting. I saw that Western States actually doesn't get their permit till the week of the race. I mean, they always get it, usually, but so they are on hold. And then, of course, Badwater says it's a go. Um, and a lot of the other races are, are, are right now on the books, and I hope they do happen. 20 years ago, which was 2001, wow, mm -hmm. doesn't seem like that, 18-year-old Dathan Ritzenheimer earns the bronze medal in the junior race of the World Cross Country Championships in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. He just recently retired, actually. And it says, no American man has won an individual medal mm -hmm. at World Cross Country since. 20 years. Magna Team Cap was fifth, race won by Kenneth Bekele. So pretty impressive. Um, mm -hmm. I've been watching a lot of these old uh, cross country meets, especially the world championships. A lot of fun to watch. Next weekend, there's the In Istanbul Half Marathon, will be one of the races of the spring. Jeffrey Kamor and Kabat Kandi in a battle of the past and present world record holders, loaded women's field mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Bridget Koskai, who owns the world record in the marathon, ran that two. 14. I tell you, someday I'd like to go to um, uh, Istanbul. I think it'd be really kind of cool. Got lots of plans to go traveling. I'm hoping to go do the Spanish hike in the near future, the uh, Camino, and then UTMB would be fun and some other ones like that. With so many races not happening, and when you do find one that you can actually run, you definitely want to try and do it. So back in October, I ran the Burrow Race, which is a 10-mile to 26-mile race. You can run with a Burrow or not with a Burrow. I did the 10-miler with some of my friends. Really enjoyed it, and it's coming up in a week or two. And then also the Judgment Day Half Marathon happened, and uh, we did that one, and they did it with... Uh, spacing and stuff and it went really well and we're going to have that race again in late may i am so i get emails and stuff and i saw there was a 5k next weekend at um uh out at, at calm which is kind of nice because so many of our races and i'm not sure how you use in your neighborhood so many of our races are just on the bike path out and back and so this is out calm which is the living zoo and it's out in the hills kind of where i go hiking so i'm definitely gonna sign up for the 5k well i did sign up for the 5k and looking forward to doing that uh, Prep Cal Track announced that LA County just announced pathways for multi team events, which would mean invitationals. So, hopefully, we'll start having some more track and cross country invitationals. There's been some pretty good times thrown out in California. So, that's always fun to watch. I have, we've had a few cross country meets here in Bakersfield, but I never can really find out when they are. I probably need to do a little bit more digging. A race that happened yesterday that I should have got up and watched, got to find it on YouTube, see the rerun, was the British Olympic Trials for the Marathon, and I believe also the Race Walk, and it's a pretty uh, amazing result there. Chris Thompson, 22 days shy of his 40th birthday, was 35 seconds behind the leaders at 30K at the British Olympic Marathon Trials, but he closed hard to win the race in a personal best, I was like PB more than PR, of 210.50, securing the Olympic standard to clinch his second Olympic berth. So almost 40 and going back to Olympics. Been watching a lot of old Olympic coverage of marathons and the race walking. And often there's athletes in their late 30s and 40s on the team. You know, Med Kofletsky ran for us many times because there's guys who know how to race. And then there's guys who can time trial real well. And they often aren't the same mix. You know, and Med was obviously that. You know, he never could run super fast. But when it counted, he made teams and he made podiums. I'll never forget when I was coaching the Bearshell Drillers. We finally finagled a trip up to Mammoth for a week and stayed at the 
condos there, watched the Olympics in Beijing. And, you know, a lot of Olympians back then were running there, Ryan Hall and Mev Kofletsky and the city of Mammoth throw us a pasta party on Friday and all the high schools were up there training showed up and Meb and Bob Larson, who's his coach were there. Got to meet him. I have this great photo of Meb in the middle with, you know, he's holding, he's here and he's a tiny little guy. And all the kids on my cross country team were like five ten to six, two. So it was just funny. Like who's that little kid? So congratulations to Chris. Um, his progress through the marathon has been consistent. Um, he's logged some solid times, the shorter distance the past year. He ran six Oh one 61, for a half, but today's run was quite a turnaround in the marathon of his life. No better time to do that. Um, and then, of course, you can't have a race without controversy of sorts. You know, the shoes. It says, was curious when when Talk would turn to Thompson's footwear today. He was wearing blacked out vapor flies. Super shoes have put companies like On in a tough position, but you have to applaud them for putting their athletes first. And that's what's happening a lot with the shoe companies now is basically those Nike shoes are just super shoes. And so if you run for another company, you got to figure, you got to like do something. And so a lot of companies are letting you black them out and stuff. And, uh, you know, the women's was Steph Davis did a personal best of 227.16 and she's going to the Tokyo Olympics as well. Speaking of Japan, I'm very disappointed to hear this. The 2021 Fukumoko International Marathon will be its final running. The JAAF reportedly has decided to terminate this historic race after its 75th anniversary edition this year. Man, you think they just keep going. It's always been an elite race. And I remember when I started running in the late 70s and 80s, I used to you know, read the magazines and hear about my heroes running. And you know, there was... Uh, Habersale Galassi, Seiko, Bill Rogers, Frank Shorter, you know, all those people would be going there. And uh, sad to see that they're ending it. You would think they'd be able to do it, but oh well. Um, speaking of marathoners also, 1984's Los Angeles Olympic Marathon, Joan Samuelson became a grandmother. Daughter Abby had a daughter, Charlotte. So congratulations to them. You know, she was an amazing runner. And it was also, she had a knee surgery and then trained in the pool and all this kind of thing, qualified for the Olympic trials, and then, of course, ran and won the Los Angeles Olympics. And I remember her, the photos of her, like, running on the highway that they closed and just this tiny little person running along on the freeways. And what's really nice about in Los Angeles is after the Olympics, they had the L.A. Marathon got started. I ran the first one, the first few, skipped a few here, there. I now think back, I go, dang, I could have been a legacy, and I would have been a young legacy because when I was running back then, you know, 1986, I was 22, 23. In fact, I was living in Los Angeles because I was teaching at Lock High, speaking of a proud track program. Their girls have won often. So congratulations, Joan Benoit. I call it Joan Benoit Samuelson. Being a grandmother, she is still clocking some amazing times right around three hours. And, of course, speaking of Boston, they're supposed to be having it um, this fall with a limited field. Um, and they're going to have a virtual marathon with entries of price from 75 to 125 for U.S. entrance. And uh, I guess you're going to get some swag and stuff like that. Registration opens March 30th. Participation window is October 8th to 10th. Yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, the virtual races are fun. I don't know if maybe do that. I, back in college days, you know, running marathons, I actually ran a 250 flat San Diego marathon like in 1982, which back then was what you had to run to qualify for Boston. But I was a poor college kid and didn't think anything of it and obviously didn't go. Went into down the uh, triathlon rabbit hole, and by the time I got done with triathlons, I was too old and too big and too slow. So I don't think I'll ever run Boston unless I do like a charity bib or I live till I'm 90 possibly. Talking about Olympic qualifying, of course, we had our Olympic trials qualifications February 29th of last year. And, you know, British England just had theirs. It's only 100 days till the uh, uh, Olympic trials, you know, the track and field trials, which are going to be up at Eugene, Oregon, at the brand new Hayward Field. And it's still undetermined whether they're going to allow spectators or not. Here's hoping they do. Last weekend, we had the cross-country championships, high, I mean, high school college ncaa division one men's and women's and breaking news is that big 10 cross country champ and 357 miler george kush has announced that he will be finishing his eligibility at northern arizona as a graduate transfer wow so 11 days after scoring 60 points to win the title the lumberjacks will add uh, the big 10 champ to their squad as if nau wasn't good enough already and that's really interesting how now you can like compete for a school 
uh, I guess. And then once you graduate, you can graduate and transfer and go another year somewhere. And uh, very interesting. I know it happens often in a lot of sports and it's definitely happening more and more in running. Speaking of running, uh, when passion for running becomes a harmful addiction, diversifying a sense of self can help to heal the relationship. And uh, I often joke that I'm kind of addicted to, I don't run much anymore, I'm more of a walker, but, you know, I was up this morning at four in the morning walking, I'll go out this afternoon, and I do it, but, you know, that's just kind of to maintain things. But it does talk about, you know, diversifying a sense of self can help to heal the relationship. And I definitely, when I had my first ever injury last year after doing this since 1979, I can relate to that. It was kind of like with COVID and my injury, you know, my world just shrunk because so many of the people I know are people that I race with, hike with, and talk, you know, sports with, coach people. And so it was kind of hard. And that's kind of why I'm doing like what I'm doing right now. These videos and stuff just kind of gives me an outlet to do something, keep myself occupied. And I often tell people, you know, my friends all, oh, I got to get seven, eight hours of sleep. Well, one of the worst parts about only sleeping four or five hours a night is you have 20 hour days. So you got to fill those days with something. So I fill them with a two hours in the morning, hour in the evening exercise. But I think I've got it under control. And I've been definitely trying to kind of diversify my uh, life in ways. You know, I used to have sports and kids and my record store and all that kind of stuff. And so now it's going, you know, I'm back into playing poker, which I'm really happy to play, play in America's card room. Chris Moneymaker just moved over there. And another really good American pro who just, she just won some tournaments, is now playing for them. And I'm thinking of doing a Twitch stream and uh, just, you know, playing some. It's funny, I was on Clubhouse yesterday talking to friends and I was playing a poker tournament and ended up busting out only a few places out of the money. A lot of what's in this uh, video is things I took off of Twitter. So if you go to my Twitter, Andy Noise, you can see the original articles. I do put some of it in the show notes, but can only put so much. And there was a really good article the other day called Ideal Racing Weight. It is an important subject because the mass of an athlete affects performance. But where is the line between an increase in performance and encouraging an athlete to adopt unhealthy behaviors? And this has been obviously a hot topic, especially with uh, female runners. But, you know, I, I was saying people like, I go, well, you know, I coach high school sports from 2006 to 2009, you know, and those coaches are, um, you know, heavily influencing young men to be way too big. You know, back in the day, you know, linemen were 220, 230. Now you've got high school linemen weighing 300 pounds. So, you know, they're working out hard. They're eating a ton. And, yes, they're taking performance-enhancing drugs. So it's an issue in many, many sports. I've come out – I've been – promoting and just never hearing anybody say anything uh, no one ever going yeah let's do that about having uh, weight divisions and running sure they've had Clydesdale races in the past I've been I've done well in them I won Bakersfield Triathlon Clydesdale when I was way over 200 pounds and I've done <coughs> other ones like two years ago they have this uh, mile climb up here pin cushion mile climb and I got I think third in the uh, Clydesdale division. And the Clydesdale division is fine and okay. But the problem with the Clydesdale, well, not a problem, is just need more divisions. And so I've come up with a thing called Newton Endurance. Of course, a Newton is, you know, how much effort it takes to move a kilogram certain distance. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I want to have like 10 kilogram divisions. And just, you know, do it informally. We don't need any more trophies and awards. And so, you know, you have the, you know, 60 kilogram kilogram division 70 80 90 like right now i'm in the 110 to 120 and it would be just fun to compete against people the same size i've got several athletes who i coach one kid was a division one baseball player he's six foot tall 200 pounds built like a greek god you know and he's never gonna you know run more than like you know 315 marathon because he's just too big and so it'd be fun and it'd be it would just make the sport more inclusive if we made weight divisions and even maybe even start races off i mean you know, just the big the big guys' divisions and things like that. So it would be really nice to do. And, of course, you know, a lot of athletes now are realizing and they've been putting it out. In fact, Eliza Cranny, who has crushed that 10K this uh, past summer, made it like fourth or fifth on the all-time USA record list. She's a Stanford gal. We got a connection from Bakersfield. Bob Moses' granddaughter from Bakersfield. Bob Moses is 
a well-known ultra runner here, but she's been very public on Instagram about her battles with and issues with food and how she's finally taking it, you know, not, not to the extreme. And you can tell she looks a lot healthier and she's not just this, um, you know, super skinny and she's running great. So there's often this myth that you've got to just be super, super skinny. And that's not the case. I remember listening to on let's run that a great podcast with uh, Alan Webb and Ryan Hall and one other athlete, I think it was Dathan Ritzenheimer, and all of them said that their big regret in their athletic careers was obsessing with weight so much and being too lean, and if they had to do it over again, they definitely would. They feel it hurt their performance, and these you know, are all male performers, so definitely something you need to think about. I now, you know, I do watch what I eat. I follow certain eating regimes more just to have rules every day than that I believe either one works. So like right now, I've done the vegan diet, I've done keto, I've done all kinds of things. I just kind of rotate through them, but I like it because it just kind of gives me, so I have to stop and think about what I eat, which is a huge point, I think. And in fact, speaking of behaviors, someone tweeted out, for behaviors that you want to do, the goal is to make triggers salient, behaviors easy, and reward as immediate and satisfying as possible. And that's true in a case, but I always just say, make a routine. In fact, I was just listening to Joe Rogan, and he's like, you know what? You know, you got a routine and go out and do it. You know, if you're pissed off and angry, you don't feel like doing it, you know, by the end of the workout, you're glad you did. So that's just kind of how things work, I think. So try and get at it. And lastly, I always follow this guy, Brad Stuhlberger, and he said something I thought was really good. He says, something wonderful about training for the sport is that you either get better or not. There are no politics, bureaucracy, keyboard warriors, reviews, or micromanaging bosses. It's just you and the barbell, or the track, or the road, or the pool, or the power meter. Good for the soul. And I can attest to that. So, as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.